Shalom, Ras Teferi. This is our most recent video. Some of y'all may have seen it on Marcus Garvey, the Negro John the Baptist's offense to Christ in his kingly character that was posted most recently. And we was checking out some of the comments. Give thanks and praise for the comments, even the criticism or critiques or what might seem to be negative comments, no matter where they're coming from in those commenting, if we keep ourselves grounded and remember First Peter chapter 3, where it says that we should be able to give a good answer to anyone who asks us a reason of this, of this, of this hope and this faith that we have, we should be able to give a good answer. You know what I'm saying? On the behalf of our father and our elder brother. Now, 83 Leaf right here makes a pretty interesting um, observation about five hours ago, though somewhat incomplete. And they say that what they notice, or will speak in their voice, what I notice, it seems to me, 83 Leaf is writing or speaking here, like you have two masters. We supposed to walk in Christ's footsteps. His laws are simple and clear. Why do you need Hyla or Hyle? Don't you think that's somewhat incomplete and perhaps somewhat disrespectful? That's not really his name. You know, we're not on that kind of nickname. You know, you know what Nick means, don't you? So we shouldn't nick his majesty's name. Anyway, you go on to say, why do you even compare Hyla with Christ? Garvey was a revolutionary figure for our people in a time of dot, 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 dot. I don't know whether you had more to say, but um, that's where 83 Leaf um, ended off. So our response was to 83 Leaf's um, inquiry was, it's obvious, or so it seems, like you do not know my father, our father, Haile Selassie I nor his son, our brother, I should have said, our elder brother, Iesus, Yehoshua. Why do I say this? Simply because when you say Christ, you should say Iesus, because both the father and the son is anointed, that is, Messiah, or interpreted Christ, when we understand what Christ is means when we understand what Christ means vis-a-vis -vis the anointing and anointed priest, prophet, and king, right? Why do we need his majesty? Not to avoid your question, but to answer it. Well, that should be obvious, but it appears that our gospel is hid, is hidden, because you are approach, or I should have said approaching H.I.M., His Imperial Majesty, from the pollution of the errors spread against that man. Now, we wasn't able to present our full, our fuller, our fuller statements in this, in this brief, in this brief area right here on the YouTubes and in the comments, but what we'd like to do, if possible, is to go into a little bit more detail, but until, until we do, we want to leave you with 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 this first of all second corinthians here in second corinthians i don't know if you can see this very clear let's move this bible here here in second corinthians right let's get a little more light on this here in second corinthians uh chapter three around about actually chapter four around about verse three and four it says this is because not self but christ Jesus or Jesus as Lord, Christ Jesus as Lord. He is Lord of Lords, and it's probably not your your fault because there's so much error that has been preached contrary to the plain, simple teaching of the gospel in Christianity that many people confuse the identity or the person of the Son and the person of the Father and the oneness of God. The oneness of God, uh, Yahweh Ahad, Ahadu Amrak, or the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Remember, Christ himself gave the great commission where he said, go forth, right, for us to go forth and to, and to, and to, and to teach and to baptize 
in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and really to teach in that name. Let's go right here and just stay on point with it, because there's much that we have to say. But that question that you asked, why do we need Hila? Why do we need His Majesty? It's kind of very interesting, but the real answer is in the Gospel. Here in the Gospel, chapter 28 of um, St. Matthew, it says, All power is given to me, Christ, the red letters, as you can see here, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, Notice how many of y'all will continue to say ghosts and continue to... This, this is a, a greater error than what is imagined in 83 Lee's question or statement of what it seems that we have two masters. Tell me something. Let's just look at the Bible right here. According to the Bible, is Jesus Christ, Yeshua, our Lord? Who is the king? Is Jesus the father? Or is he one with the Father? He said, I came bearing witness of another, of the Father. Therefore, my witness is true. He didn't come to be a witness of himself. He came to be a witness of another. See, this is a point in Christianity among so-called nominal Christians that I and I hope they work out before it's too late, is that they do not understand the Trinity, or they do not understand the Father, the person of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's much confusion around this particular point and matter. Now, Christ, yes, we are to walk in the footsteps of Christ, we to follow Christ. That is directly Scripture. And not just walk in the footsteps like the poster, the footsteps poster, and a lot of other cute stuff that they put out, that so-called Christians put out. But let's stick with the Bible. We're to walk in his what? In his footsteps. In other words, to follow him. He says to follow him. He says teaching them, these nations, to observe, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So what Christ has commanded, we are to observe to, and to teach others to observe as well. So why do we need the Father? Why is the revelation of the Father important? Why is it important? And is it important? See, people have confused the identity of Yeshua who is the Son of God, with God the Father. And with John chapter 16 is the prophecy concerning his majesty, Hila Selassie, given by Jesus Christ, where he says that you're not going to see me no more, but you're going to see one, that spirit of truth, you understand, and one who, when they see him, they will think that they see him, but actually it would be the Father now being witness to the Son. And this is the gospel. So when you ask the question of why do we need his majesty, I think that's the fullness of it. We're not going to break it down or, 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 or nickname his majesty, nickname our father. But let's go on there here. It says, but if our gospel be hid or hidden, it is hid to them that are lost. And what do we mean by this? You say that it seems that we have two masters because we speak of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christus, the Son, and we speak of Hila Selassie, the Father, and how Jesus Christ bore witness to the Father and how the Father, His Majesty, bears witness to Jesus Christ. Why do we need His Majesty? Because His Majesty clarifies the true identity of Christ. He, he clarifies he, he redeems, in other words, the Bible. He redeems the truth of God's word. We, we, could not, we could not receive the true word as it was preached in racism and slavery and in evil and by the demons and by the evildoers who told us that we were everything evil, foul, unkind, nasty, rotten down, gutter, low down, everything except children of God, you, you know, according to that whitewashed paradigm. So what his imperial majesty does, in addition to redeeming us, 
the once lost but now found Beta Israel, is also redeem the true gospel of Christ. He proves that the word of God is real, is not whitewashed for us. But look at verse 4 right there. It says, it says that our gospel may be hid to those who are lost, lost in, in translation. Remember the Bible says that they have found the Messiah, which is interpreted, which is what? Which is interpreted, the Christ. Interpreted in what language? Not the language of Yeshua, but the language of the Greco-Roman world of that particular time. Most people would say Christ as though Christ, Jesus, Yeshua, is the only one who is Messiah. Or he's the only one who is anointed. You understand? We're not to accept that Jesus Christ is Christ. We're to accept that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's Lord, but let me show you right here, because some would say, oh, you're just saying that, you're just making up your own thing or something like that. So let's show you right here in the Word. Let's go to the famous um, 1010 wins. Let's go to the 1010 that wins. The 1010 that wins. Here we are right here. The 1010, let's go to the 109. Romans, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. What does it say right here? It says that if thou shalt what? Confess. With thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, you understand, the Lord, the Master, not the King Jesus. See, the King is his Father. The Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is the Father. So you hear a lot of Christians be saying, um, Nominal Christians or unlearned Christians, Christians that don't know the word. Remember what Christ said to the Sadducees? You do err. You are an error, not knowing the what? The scriptures. The scriptures nor the power of God. So if the power of God, power, the hyla, why do we need the hyla? Why do we need the power? They don't, you, how can you know the power of God if you don't know the scriptures or the proper interpretation of the gospel? So we are to do what? We are to confess with our mouth, what? The Lord, Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. If you were to listen to most so-called nominal Christians, they would want to make you believe that Jesus just got up himself. He just rose himself up, that Yeshua just got up. No, it says that God hath raised him. God who? God the Father hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth, or man, amen, man has subjective amen, which is the inmet, uh, faith, or exercising faith, or admittance, or even one can say confession to righteousness, and with the mouth, Confession is made to salvation. So if we admit, right, with the heart, with the innermost of the inner, to righteousness, to right relation, right living, right spirit, right psychological soul aspect, right bodily, physical, worldly aspect, in the trinity that is the image in us that we were created in, in our spirit, soul, and body. And with the mouth now, confession is made to salvation. Confession is made to salvation. There's one other area I want to show you concerning why do we need the power. That's what Hyla means. Hyla means the power. You, you know what I mean? Uh, Amharic and Ethiopic. Ethiopic is, 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 is much the Ethiopian foundations are much older than, than the English foundations. Even the English know that. You know, so you don't reject that because it's not Anglo-Saxon. You know, don't reject that because it's not whitewashed. You understand, or what you were told to 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 believe is the truth. But now let's look at this right here. This was interesting, right? Because here's here's a solution for those who might think that we worship two masters. Or really, the question is, why do we need Hila Selassie? You understand, and the whole two masters point, right? Let's go to Ephesians. We're in Ephesians one, chapter one. Here's a prayer that that the Apostle Paulos or Paul, you understand, um. Gave in the first chapter at verse 15, it says, 
the prayer for knowledge, for gnosis, for gnosis, for knowledge and hyla and heil. The, the, a prayer for knowledge and heil. Why would we pray for knowledge and heil? Why would we pray for knowledge and el? Because heil is el. You know, el in the Hebrew comes from the Ethiopic, the older, the first language, heil, heil. See, if you study, that's why you know, study and show yourself approved. You understand? And don't stay in error. Don't stay lost in translation. So why do we need power? Because we were weak because of white supremacy and their whitewash and their errors and their lies and their blasphemy. We were weak. We were lost. That's why we need Hila. That's why we need Hila Selassie and his Hail and his power. It says right here, verse 15 says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith, in the look what it say, the Lord, the, the Master, He is our Master, the Lord, the Lord, and the, what does His Majesty teach us? He teaches us of Christ. He teaches us of the way, the walk. You understand? And He testifies perfectly for I and I who receive Him. You understand? For those who still are lost in translation, well, this is a prayer for you. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. And love to all the saints or Kedusan holy ones, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That what? That what? That the God, the what? The God of our Lord Jesus Christ. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ is the what? Is the Father of glory. Is the Father of glory. That's what Hila Selassie has restored to the true black people or to the faithful black people, the Ethiopian Hebrews and the elect Rastafari, he restores to us our shock and awe, our Shekinah, our glory, our Shekinah as some pronounce it, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Notice something about this verse right here. It doesn't say that Jesus give it to you. No, that the God, the Father of glory, the God of our Adonai, Adonai, Yehoshua HaMoshiach, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom, of wisdom and revelation and revelation in the knowledge of who? In the knowledge of him. Oh, 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 which him do you think is speaking of here? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened or illuminated, not darkened to why we need Hila, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. What is the true hope? You know the hope is expectation, Tesfa. What is the true expectation of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance? So through his majesty, we have an inheritance in the Kedusan, in the saints, in those white robed martyrs that we know from the video and the historical testimony when the fascists, the Romans, had invaded Ethiopia and martyred all of those blameless Ethiopians that took place before the start of World War II. That's Revelation. That's, that, that's in, right there in the book of Revelation. You understand? Verse 19, it says, And what is the what exceeding greatness of his power? Of his what? Again, Hyle. Hail is power to us, word, who believe or who mamen, who, who admit, according to the working of his mighty, his mighty power, his mighty hail, which he wrought, which he wrought, which God wrought in Christ. Notice that. God wrought this. He did this. In Christ, in Yeshua, in the anointed, when he raised him from the dead. So did Jesus raise himself? No. God, his father, our father, raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. In the heavenly places. Let me put a little footnote here. In the fear of the black planet. 
We want Abba Kedus now. Verse 21, it says, Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come. Now, there's something very interesting about what it's saying. If we would understand, you ever had reading comprehension in school? And, and, and that's a class that a lot of people don't do that well in. You understand? All thanks and praise be to the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I and I was able to do well in that particular class, and it's paying off now. Because when you start to read this here, one thing, this is all about Jesus, 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 Jesus. No, it's not. It's about his father. The Lord Jesus Christ, Adonai and Yehoshua HaMoshiach, came to be a witness to who? According to his word, his father, his father. He was speaking of his father. But most Christians think it's all about Jesus or it's all about Christ, but then Christ will tell you in his own words, in his own words, beloved, will tell you it's really all about his father because without his father, he would not have been raised from the dead, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand. Now tell me something. When you read this, is this talking about two masters right here? What's a master? Master is the Lord. We, we only have one. We don't, call, we don't say Lord Haile Selassie. You understand? He's the King of Kings. He's our Father. We say the Lord Jesus Christ. So we do not have two masters. We have one master, even Jesus Christos, even Jesus Christ, Jehoshua Ha Moshiach. So we hope that this is able to explain a little bit more to this particular question that we were that we were asked right here. You understand of why do you need Hila? Really, it should be why we need Hila, but since you might still be lost in translation about this particular matter concerning Christ, concerning God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, how they all are one, but they have very important um, roles to play in our salvation. You understand? In other words, we have to, we have to align our spirit you understand our spirit with the Father, you know, our our psyche with the Son, you understand, and let our body, even our flesh, be led by the Holy Spirit. Overstand that. More to come, my brothers and sisters, y'all willing. So we hope, 83 Leaf, we hope that some of this will be helpful, helpful for you if, if the question was really sincere of why we need you understand, or why do I, I and I, and ones like I and I, why do we need Hila, you understand, or Hile? Why do we need his power or the power, the first power of the Holy Trinity? So more to come. Stay tuned, Yah willing. Shalom Rastafari.